Well, the 1970s in, in Britain, and particularly um, up in the Northwest, you know, it was a very challenging time. And I think if you were a person of colour, uh, as I was, then for me, racial prejudice and racial discrimination and racial violence was a day-to-day -day occurrence. When I was growing up, there were very few days when I wasn't involved in a fight. I was coming back from school one day, I had big glasses, and I was just walking along. I was 10, and a 25 or 26-year-old man turned around and punched me in the face. Now, this was normal. And so when I came to London and when I came to Netherhall, I, I think, honestly, for the first time in my life, I was in a community where people did not make judgments and where I felt safe away from home. Well, I was born uh, as a Muslim. I was born into a Muslim family. And it was really only when I came here to Netherhall that I was able to think more carefully about my own belief system. I found a book called Prayer, and the book was written by Hans Urs von Balthasar. I think that what um, appealed to me most was that I could intellectually understand Christianity. In those days, um, when I was um, part of a, a quiet prayer group, it was very difficult to have that quiet moment on my own, especially when you're a teenager. Time never stops. You're always running, running, running. So that particular um, quiet prayer, uh, self-contemplation, was a time for me when you could just allow yourself. Then I started to attend Mass. But of course, I would go for blessings. And this was the second step. If you're, a, if you're born a Muslim and you leave the faith, you're an apostate, and the punishment for apostasy is death. Now, of course, my mother would not have killed me, <laughs> but in a Muslim society, then it was very difficult for me. So I kept my views somewhat hidden. My mother died when I was 26. I never told her about my journey. It would have been too difficult for me, I think, to make her upset. <laughs> and when I was in Hong Kong, I became much more um, comfortable also with my own journey as a Christian. And so that's when I stopped worrying. And of course, I converted as well, I was baptized. And my Christianity was something which was no longer a burden each and every day, in everything I do, if I can show my faith to others, this is the best way to influence them. I have changed my, my, my interaction um, with my colleagues and my faith as I've, as I've grown older. You know, if I'm in a meeting, or if I, I don't, if, for example, if you come to my office, it's very clear, I, I live in a secular um, context, but also a non-secular world. And so I don't see any divisions. I also got to know Stephen, Stephen Hawking. Uh, I was at Cambridge and I was lucky to become the inaugural chairman of the Stephen Hawking Foundation. He had proclaimed his lack of belief in God openly but when Stephen passed, his own wishes were for a Christian funeral. Now this to me was incredible. I was always restless. I was always looking for something. I was always rushing from one thing to another. But I have to tell you one thing. In the evenings when I go to bed, I cannot wait to wake up in the next morning. So if that is happiness, then I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs>